So a few months ago, me and my, my lady pal, we were scrolling through Disney Plus, you know, looking for things to click and choose. And little did I know that when Disney Plus went up, they unarchived a lot of their really old live action movies from like the 70s and the 80s. And I have probably found the best of all of them. It came out in 1978 and it's called The Cat from Outer Space. Now, we're going to talk about The Cat from Outer Space today. So if, if you've been longing to see this movie and you just haven't managed to see it in the past 42 years, I'm sorry, I'm gonna spoil it. I'm just basically gonna tell you the plot of this movie. It's worth a watch, definitely. But also, it's, the plot of the movie is too ridiculous not to talk about. So this isn't really a real review. This is me talking about how ridiculous the plot of this movie is because it's so ridiculous. It's about a cat named Jake who crash lands on Earth and seeks the help of a scientist named Frank to help him repair his spaceship. Now Jake is no ordinary cat. He has a collar that gives him telekinetic and telepathic powers and that's how he communicates with Frank and all the other cast of characters. And he like makes people float and he does all sorts of weird shit. Now, the military has taken Jake's spaceship and locked it away in a secret military base. So him and Frank break into the military base, of course, to try and repair the spaceship. And this is when they find out that they need $20,000 worth of gold <laughs> to repair his spaceship. Ductile yellow metallic element. Melting point, 1,063. Tensile strength, 19,000. Uh, tensile strength what? 19,000. Atomic weight, 196.967. Oh, wait a minute. That's the atomic weight of gold. Obviously, you need gold to repair your spaceship. Duh. So now Jake and Frank are met with the dilemma of where are they going to get $20,000 worth of gold from, you know? So Frank recruits his, his, his co-worker, buddy, slash guy who breaks into his house all the time. Uh... I don't know what his name is. I don't bother. I'm just going to call him sports betting guy because he's a sports betting guy, you know? And he's like, yo, I'm, I want to, I want to gamble to get $20,000. So sports betting guy sets them up with like a line on games. And the plan is that Jake's going to use his telekinetic powers to like rig everything so that they, they win. But for some dumb reason, like... One of the side characters thinks that Jake's sick and they sedate him and they end up losing the bet. He's like, oh no, it all went to hell. Because they lost all the money on that sport bet thing, they were like, dang, how else are we going to make money? So this is when it starts to turn into like uncat gems. They're going down the rabbit hole of gambling and gambling, trying to get $20,000 so Jake can go home. So they go to their local bar and they decide to pull a pool hustle with Jake's collar. Now they have this one girl come up who apparently is just shit at pool and she loses the first game and this is when one of the greatest scenes in all of cinema happens and I'm not even going to tell I'm just going to I'm going to let you watch. Here's our last 60 bucks. What are the odds now? I'm sorry, I can't do it. No bet. No bet. It's part of my code of ethics. Always leave the sucker rent money. Well, that's not fair. Honest, Harry? If the mark wants to go complete top city, he's got a constitutional right. And I stand on it. The odds, Ernie. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But if I didn't have no principles, I'd say, ah, under to one. Uh, suppose, suppose she gives Sarasota Slim 12 balls. What a sense of humor. <laughs> ah, 300 to one. Uh, and the break. <laughs> the break? 500 to 1. And blindfolded. What? Blindfolded. <laughs> 2,000 to 1. You're on. $60 at 2,000 to 1. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you seriously serious? You're not thinking of Welshing, are you? <laughs> but I thought you was putting me on. Ernest Ernie. 
It would not do your reputation any credit if word was to circulate that you reneged on a wager duly offered and accepted. So after this, Jake wakes up and they win the game of pool because Jake uses his mind powers to rig it and all of that. And they win the whole $20,000 that they needed. And now they just have to break back into the military base so they can install the $20,000 of gold they just won. They won it in cash. They never showed them exchanging the cash for gold, but I guess that doesn't matter. This is a movie. This is Disney in 1978. Anyway, they get to the base and they make the repairs. And all of a sudden, oh no, the girl that was playing pool earlier, she gets kidnapped by an evil organization trying to steal Jake's technology. Yeah, that's a weird subplot. There's these weird, I don't know. There are these guys that keep on filming Jake to see what kind of technology. It's like an evil corp thing. It, I don't know. They're like shown twice in this movie and it's a weird subplot and I don't really get it. Jake now feels bad that he's leaving because he thinks he can save the lady. So Jake just sends his ship off with the $20,000 worth of gold <laughs> and he decides he's just going to stay. He's just gonna stay. He just wasted $20,000. After that happens, there's this plane chase scene where like one of them's in a helicopter and then Jake and Frank are going after the helicopter in their like jank ass plane that Jake's controlling with his mind powers. It's a weird scene for multiple reasons. One, because some of it looks like they really did it. And then some of it looks awful, like <laughs> clearly a soundstage and like, they couldn't even bother to have a real cat in the plane sometimes. It's just, it's quite clearly a fake cat in the plane. It's kind of funny. Uh, but you would think that's where the movie ends. They save the girl from the plane, uh, and they all live happily ever after. But uh, no, that's not how the movie ends. It ends with um, Jake becoming a U.S. citizen. Yes, it is exactly how weird you would think it is. Yeah, I'm just gonna let that scene play out. Guys. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The United States District Court, the Honorable Judge Alvin Horsham presiding. Please be seated. You have made application for citizenship of the United States of America. It is a signal honor, which implies not only rights, but duties and obligations. Bearing arms, serving on juries, voting. Who is sponsoring this applicant? I am, Your Honor. Does the cat have a name? Yes, sir. Zunar J5 slash... Oh, Jake, Your Honor. Please stand, Jake. Repeat after me. I, Jake, I, Jake, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands. And to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible. One nation, under God, indivisible. With, with liberty. liberty and justice for all. Patriotism. So um, that's the end of this video, I guess. I don't, ow, fuck. I just turned off my computer. <laughs> oh well, but that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoy, this one's shorter, which is gonna save me time. Um. Uh... I really don't care if it's short or long at this point. I made one 8-minute video, minute video, one 20-minute video. I'm really inconsistent. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you watched The Cat from Outer Space. And... Bye!